All right, so for this uh, setup, we have a motor that is driving two different winches through a little gear train. And uh, there's gonna be two different velocities for the two masses that are being lifted. Um, we know how much voltage is being supplied to the motor. And so what we're supposed to do is figure out how much current the motor will draw as a result of it having to lift these two weights, okay? The other piece of info that we know is how fast weight number one over there on the left is moving. It says it's moving 230 meters per minute. We're given how many teeth are on each of the gears and we're also given the diameters of the two spools that are uh, taking up the rope to lift the two weights, okay? So here's the first thing that I'm gonna mention. Um, in order for us to think about efficiency, right? This is kind of the heart of this problem is the efficiency question. Uh, what we need to think of is what is the definition of efficiency? So what is the definition of efficiency? Useful energy out. Okay. Useful energy out or power out. I'm gonna say it in terms of power. Divided by what? Required power in. Okay. Do we have any way of uh, stating what our required power in is going to be or is for this problem? Okay. Electrical power. Electrical power can be stated in terms of voltage times current. We know one of those factors. We just don't know the other factor, right? So we can easily get the denominator of this um, by, okay, so we can just take 240 volts and multiply it by this unknown thing that I'll just call I. That's what we're trying to find, okay? We also happen to know that this whole thing has to uh, equate to 66%, which if we state that as a decimal, we go to 0.66, okay? So now all we have to do is come up with how much useful energy are we getting out of the system, right? One of those factors as far as the useful energy out is going to be the energy applied to the left weight. And the other thing that's useful, at least you would imagine, is energy applied to the right weight, okay? We actually already have enough information for the left weight to figure out basically how much power we are delivering to that left weight. And the reason I know that is that one of our uh, formulations of power, let me actually do it kind of, you know, from more, a more basic standpoint. If you think about energy, like work, let me actually say it as work, okay? Work, what's the definition of work? Think back to your physics class or, or uh, you know, the most basic idea of work is how hard you push times how far you move, right? Just force times distance. Okay, well now my question is what happens if I take this expression and I divide both sides by time? Okay, on the left, this is power work per time, all right? It's the rate of, rate of flow of work, rate of flow of energy. What do I get on the right side? What if I collect D over time? That's a velocity, right? So force times velocity, okay? So power is equal to force times velocity. Well, how much force am I carrying in this rope right here? Right, 18 kilograms times 9.81 meter per second squared. That gives me a number of newtons, right? Those two factors right there. But then I multiply by what? Okay, 230 meters per minute. OK. 
okay? And if you're looking at that with concern because you realize that when you, if you take amperes times volts, it's going to give you uh, joules per second, right? Amperes times volts gives you watts, which is joules per second. You see that that time basis is gonna be seconds, whereas I have a minute in the numerator, okay? Some of you would be able to see that far ahead. Uh, then I would say it's fine to go ahead at this stage and multiply by what? We probably need to get seconds in the denominator, right? So I'm gonna multiply by a minute per 60 seconds, okay? But this is only half the story, so I need to actually create more room right here. Why is that? I have the other side that uh, is also counting as useful energy out. So I'm gonna add, at least ostensibly I think I'm going to add, uh, how much power is being delivered to the other weight. How do I figure that part out? Let's do this. Uh, presumably, if the velocity V1 is 230 meters per minute, that means that this thing must be turning clockwise to be pulling the uh, rope up on that spool, the direction that's shown, right? So if that's turning clockwise, this is going to turn counterclockwise, right? Which means this one here is going to turn clockwise, which means this is turning counterclockwise, which is nice because that tells us that we probably are delivering a positive power to that 94 kilogram weight that's hanging off of there. So that's good. We've at least done that. How do I figure out how fast gear six is turning so that I can figure out how fast V2 is? Okay. Let me do it this way. Let's say spool one is connected to gear five, right? So let me do this. Let me say omega five. That's how fast uh, that one is turning. How do I figure that out? Two hundred and thirty meters per minute is how fast it's moving linearly, right? How do I turn that into a rotational speed? Okay, so we can kind of think of it in terms of what I'm trying to get it into is an RPM, right? Revolutions per minute. Um, I need to sort of think of what is my factor that turns my linear into revolutions? What is that factor? Circumference, right? And how do I find circumference of spool one? Okay. Yeah, so the circumference here is going to be, uh, I'll say C1, is going to be equal to 1.4 meters times pi, right? And that factor is basically uh, how much length you have per revolution. But what do we want? We want to get rid of the length and end up with the number of revolutions, right? So what do I do? I probably need to multiply this by for every revolution, I have 1.4 meters times pi, right? And that will give me a number of RPM because I already have this basis of minutes right here. Okay, so let's figure out what this is. 230, oops, 230 uh, divided by 1.4 times pi. 52.294. And this is in RPM. What do I do with that? Can I figure out what omega six, meaning the 
angular speed of spool number six over there, or spool two, I should say, gear number six? Can I figure that out? And if so, how? Yeah, we can use the ratios of numbers of teeth. So when I go from gear five to gear four, does gear four turn faster or slower? So does the bigger gear turn slower or faster? The bigger gear turns slower, the smaller gear turns faster, right? And in this case, gear four is the smaller gear. So I would need to multiply this by 49 over 36. All right, to go to the speed of gear four. Okay, then what? What if I wanna go from there to gear three? Does gear three turn faster or slower than gear four? Probably faster, right? Because I have a smaller gear again. So I would need to multiply this by 36 over 24. Okay. So what if I want to move on from there to uh, gear six? Does gear six move uh, more slowly or more quickly than gear three? More slowly, right? So I would multiply in that case by 24 over 98. Okay. Then what? Is that it? Okay. Yeah, that should be it, right? Because I'm, what I'm coming up with is an angular speed of gear number six, which is also the angular, angular speed of spool two, right? So I can go ahead and calculate this. Notice here that uh, 36 and 36 will cancel, 24 and 24 will cancel. And what you can tell by that is that it actually didn't matter for this question how big gear four and gear three were, right? It's almost like gear five was mating directly with gear six. So that's a side note, but we'll go ahead and calculate this. Take this number and multiply by 49 over 98. Okay. And that gives me 26.147, we'll say. RPM. Then what? What I need to do next is figure out the velocity V2. Okay, how do I figure that out? 26.147 RPM, which is actually revolutions per minute, right? And multiply that by what? What's the size of spool two? 0.3 meters in diameter but I need to think of what the circumference is because basically I'm going to have that circumference, which is gonna be 0.3 meters times pi. That's how far, how much rope will be wound up per revolution. Agree with that? All right, so we should be able to calculate that relatively easily. Multiply this by 0.3 and divide, or excuse me, and multiply it by pi. And that gives me 24.64 units, meters per minute. Okay. And that puts me in the same place now with this weight as I started with the other weight. So I should be able to add it back into my question of um, this efficiency question up here, right? Let me give myself some room. So I have 94 kilograms, 
9.81 meter per second squared times 26.147 Uh, meters, no, that wasn't it. Read the wrong one. 24.64 meters per minute. And what else? That time conversion. Okay, and the reason I do the time conversion again is that uh, if I have amperes for my I value there, I will end up with a uh, joules per second in the denominator. If you think about this, you know, kilogram meter per second squared is a newton. If we get that newtons per, or excuse me, newtons times meters, which is the meters we have there, divided by seconds, that's the same as uh, joules per second, so that all of that cancels out to being unitless. All right, so now we just need to enter all of that stuff and figure out what I is going to be, which is relatively easy. So, 18, tell you how I'm going to do this actually. Um, I'm going to take some common factors out of this. So, let me take uh, 9.81 or divided by 60, I should say. and then multiply all that by the factors that aren't common. So I'll do 18, oops, wound up outside of my parentheses there, 18 times 230, and here I'll do 94 times 24.64. And then in the denominator, I'm going to put 240 times x. I'm going to set this equal to 0.66. All right. And so I turns out to be 6.664. amps. All right. Any questions about that one? None? All right.